We have some exciting things going on here at the channel. If you haven't seen the announcement, I'm excited to let you guys know about this brand new sponsorship. That is, no, not Disney. Although I would be down to do some disc golf around Disney World. No, it's not Diet Coke either, but this one would definitely save me quite a few dollars. Well, I'd be down to clown. You have your people get in contact with my people. Let's work this one out. One last try. Here we go. Yeah, now we're talking. That's right, y'all. Robbie C. Disc Golf has officially found its home on Team Enema. What is up, YouTube fam? Robbie C here. This week, we are starting a brand new series, Building Your Bag. There are tons of options out there when it comes to discs you could put in your bag, so I wanna give you guys the game plan for this series. I'm gonna go through all four types of discs. Putters, mid-ranges, fairway drivers, and distance drivers. We're gonna look at what you need in your bag for all of these options, and I'm gonna be working through the end of a lineup to see what I need in my bag. But the hope is the tips that I'm using to pick the disc for me will also help you find the right plastic to help you get to the basket as fast as possible. Now, I've had a lot of friends help me out in trying some plastic, but the biggest help I've had is from the team over at OTB Discs. Y'all, the team is unreal, and they hooked me up with so much plastic so that I could find only the best options for my bag. So as we go throughout this series, it would mean a ton to me if you'd be willing to thank them as well by heading over to otbdiscs.com and using code RCDiscGolf at checkout to save yourself on some free shipping and, you know, pass a little gratitude off. This not only supports what they're doing, but it supports the channel here as well. And without OTB, this entire series would definitely not be possible. With formalities out of the way, let's dive into our first category, and that is putters. If you know me or have ever played with me before, you know that I love throwing putters. There are two categories of putters that everyone should have in their bag. The first is putting putters, and the other is throwing putters. I'm not saying that you can't have an AVR that you putt with and an AVR that you drive with, but I truly believe that we should make sure that our putting putters are rare thrown, honestly, if ever. How do we pick our putting putter? At the end of the video, I'm going to share a link to a video I made about how to choose your perfect putting putter. So we'll go through the Cliff Notes version. Most every putting putter is going to fly about the same inside of circle one. So it really comes down to three options. Bead or beadless, how does the depth of the disc feel in your hand? And what's the plastic type you like? Thankfully, we have a disc golf shop in town, but one of the best ways that you can start feeling which putters feel good and which don't. When you're playing with people and friends, well, ask if you can hold their putter. Putter. Yeah, that one's gonna sound weird. So I took a look at some of the most popular options. I knew I wanted a beaded putter. The problem is the JK AVR was a little too flimsy and a little too rubbery feeling for me, and it just didn't seem to work. Like I said, I wanted a beaded putter, so DX plastic felt really good. With the lack of the bead, the classic AVR felt just a wee bit too shallow for me, bringing me to the Yeti Pro AVR. This one felt really good in the hand, and I kinda dig the plastic. But if I'm being honest, there was one putter I had my heart set on, the KC Pro. AVR. I love the feel of KC Pro Plastic. My putt has a lot of pop to it and a stiff plastic definitely works for me. And then the next key is stick with it. If I just went with how results were after my first round of putting with KC Pro AVRs, well, I don't know that I'd be putting with them anymore. But switching to new putters is supposed to feel different. Having confidence that I wanted to putt with these is huge. And the only way I'm going to build confidence in them is to continue to putt with them for the next two months. That's going to give me a proper trial to know whether or not I truly like that mold, and it's gonna give me time to beat them in to see how they fly when they're seasoned versus just brand new. But what you really came for is the other category, throwing putters. When choosing discs for your bag, one of the biggest things you can do is decide what flight pass you actually need. For me personally, I can comfortably throw a putter anywhere from 200 to 250 feet. Therefore, inside of that distance threshold, I have a few shots that I'm looking for from a putter. I need a putter that can fly dead straight. I need another putter that is pretty overstated I'm going to use that one for approaching and short tee shots. And lastly, I need an understable putter that I can throw flat and watch it slowly turn or hold an Anheuser line for a tremendous amount of time. With all that said, we've got three shots, so let's look for three discs. The first place I want to start is that overstable slot because it's the easiest decision I have to make and it's already been made, let's be honest. There are two standout choices when it comes to the end of a lineup and that is the AVR X3 and the Pig. Now I have a deep love for both of these discs and the AVR X3 changed 
changed my scores more than any other mold I had ever thrown. The most reliable shot in disc golf is the Heiser, and an overstable putt and approach disc is designed to do exactly that. The AVR X3 does this very well from 200 feet and in for me. When I start moving to the 200 to 250 range, I struggle to get it to come back because it just doesn't have as much fade as the pig. One of the biggest places I notice that difference is on forehands. Due to the thumb track, it feels so comfortable throwing a pig on a forehand and it just always seems to want to get back. The AVR X3, when you really start putting some pop on it, wants to go more straight rather than fading and this can be somewhat unreliable. I love my pigs and I truly believe it is the best putt and approach disc in the game. So the pig takes care of our overstable line, leaving us needing a straight option and an understable option. I checked out a multitude of options from the end of a lineup and got ready to test them all out. The first part of my test was trying to throw the discs incredibly straight. These cones stretch all the way from 150 feet out to 250 feet and they're about 30 feet apart from each other. I wanted to see how many of the discs I could get to stay inside of that line. Important tip, make sure that you throw the disc multiple times because when you only throw it once, you don't know whether you threw it really well or really poorly or just average. After that first test, I could already tell that the whale wasn't going to be it for us. It was just a little too stable and had too much finish to hold that straight line I was looking for. The next was seeing how well these discs held an Anheuser line. This one was extremely difficult because they all threw really well. What I was looking for was how it felt coming out of my hand and how much it stayed on that line without feeling like it was falling out into a roller or fading out, taking me off my desired result. And it brought in another factor that's pretty important to me when it comes to building a bag. Personally, I don't love throwing extreme custom runs of anything or discs that are not massively available. One of my favorite things about disc golf is how cheap it is. And throwing really expensive discs makes me very afraid of obstacles and losing discs, which means often I end up choosing the wrong disc for the shot simply because I'm afraid to lose it. The animal feels so good, but as a newer mold, it's not very available. So due to that current limited availability, I think it's just not gonna work out between us, Mr. Animal. Our third and final test was the extreme hyzer. I wanted to throw our three remaining options on an extreme hyzer to see how they reacted to that angle. Often when throwing putters, you wanna have a disc that doesn't fade out and fall into that hyzer as hard as maybe your overstable putt and approach disc. The hard part was once again, all of these threw extremely well and I felt very good about all of them. But thankfully they weren't filling that straight slot. What did I choose for the straight shot? I chose a pig. Now this is my precious child and this pig has been beat into perfection. And one of the things I try to do in my bag is throw as few molds as possible. So if I can make one mold work for multiple slots, even if that means I have to have multiple versions of that disc in my bag, I'm okay with it. I'm okay having one pig in my bag that's my super overstable putt and approach disc. Over time, I'm using this so much that eventually it's going to beat in and get to the same state as my precious child. I can throw this blue pig straight down that tunnel and it only fades out a little bit on me, which is exactly what I'm looking for in that specific mold. So with the overstable and our straight slot taken, that just left us with the understable option. And if you think back to the straight shots we were throwing, there were two discs that were definitely standing out when it came to wanting to naturally start going to the right or turning even on a straight shot. The invader flew extremely well, but it's more likely to fit into that straight slot or even start leaning towards the overstable slot. And I'm okay with that. So I definitely recommend been checking out, but it just wasn't for me. Leaving with the Colt and the Nova. Both of these discs passed all the tests I was looking for, and I knew that one of them was going to end up in my bag. But one of the discs allowed me to do something that edged out the other, and that is why it ended up in my bag. The XT Nova feels almost like an ultimate Frisbee lid to me, and coming from an ultimate background, that is so awesome. One of my favorite ways to approach is to throw the disc on a hammer and let it slide up on the face of the flight plate and just nestle itself right next to the basket. Lots of people throw putters in some sticky situations. And so you need to find a disc that works for you that you can throw as many ways as possible so that you don't have to carry extra discs simply for those weird utility shots. So where's that leave me in my bag? Well, overstable putt and approach disc, you guessed it, it's a pick. For that straight flyer, <laughs> it's another pick. And as you can tell, I really love throwing the pig. So why don't we throw a third one in there just in case I happen to lose one mid round? Yeah. 
I think three pigs is enough. For our understable option, we ended up with the XT Nova. I love this disc and its utility is unmatched. I bagged it over for years and I can already tell you how awesome it is having one back in the bag. I think with this stack of throwing putters, we're definitely gonna find ourselves near the basket pretty often, which means we're gonna need that putting putter as well. Casey Pro AVRs are getting the call and I couldn't be more excited for this lineup that we have for all of these incredible Innova putters. So that's gonna wrap things up for episode one of how to build your bag. What are questions you have or things that you wanna see answered in parts two, three, and four? And I wanna make sure that this is a comprehensive guide to help you build your bag the best way possible. Let me know in the comments below so that we can keep making this content better to help you as best as we possibly can. I'm so grateful for each and every one of you. Thank you for stopping by. I hope you have an amazing week. And if you wanna go pick out that putting putter now, feel free to check out this video right here. I hope it helps a ton. But for now, I'm gonna leave you with the birdie.